Hey, Bev, pass me some sunset lotion. There you go. Thanks. Hey, we really lucked out with the weather. I know. Sure will be twerking in New York, huh? Huh. You don't have much time left at all, so you better enjoy it. I know. It's going by so fast. Oh. Where'd you rather go this morning? I guess it's not about going fishing. Fishing? <laughs> he doesn't know how to fish. I know, I know. He'll probably fall in. There goes my Mizola. Oh, well. Leave it. Let it go. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll learn the hard way. Yeah. Good for him. He deserves it. Can't bait them, you know what I mean? Three fish all day? Oh, I caught one other one. Here, let me show you. This could be great. Uh, let me get him out here. Ah! Ew! Oh, 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 Maybe we can go. Maybe we can go someplace and get some answers. On our way in, I remember seeing some kind of marine lab. Was it like a science institute? Maybe we could bring it there. Yeah. Well, maybe we could all go over there and get some answers or something. We? Why don't you go over? I want to stay here and get some more sun. Then you want me to go by myself? It is your fish, darling. Well, sure. you caught it. Go find out what happened to it. You girls are really useless, you know that? You just be on time for once this evening, brother dear. Hey, um, look, we'll all meet later at the, uh, I think it's called the Seashore Disco. Okay? Yeah, that's it. Uh-huh. All right. Be on time. Yeah, Leah. For yeah. once. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, right. Good. Come in, it's open. Hi. Uh, you Doc Jansen? That's me. What can I do for you? Oh, hi. My name's Bob Wilson. And I went fishing today, Doc. And, and I caught this fish. Well, that's what usually happens when you go fishing. Huh? Oh, oh, no. This is no ordinary fish, you know, Doc? Look. You're right. This isn't normal. Oh. Well, what do you think happened to it? I don't know yet. Where did you catch this fish? About a mile off the coast. Why? That's very unusual. I know I've seen something like this before. You've seen something like this before? Where? Yeah, well, I don't know for sure. I'll have to do some more tests under the microscope. You know, it looks really bad, Doc. But I want to know one thing. What caused this to happen? 
Well, the outer skin is covered with some sort of infection. It seems to have engulfed the gill region. Maybe some sort of bacteria. You know, it looks like it suffocated or something. Well, that appears to be what happened. Uh, Doc, what kind of fish is this, by the way? Oh, it's a bluefish. A bluefish? Well, it doesn't look blue anymore. Anyway, what, what's all that red ooze around it? This red ooze apparently spread throughout the body. I have to do a complete autopsy to find out exactly what happened. What will this take, Doc? Well, probably a few hours. A few hours? I don't have a few hours. Look, here's my phone number. I gotta get ready to go out tonight and stuff like that. And I'm going out with my sister, so, you know, you, you, you just call me there. Okay, just be on a safe side. Wash yourself well. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, don't worry about it. When I get home, Doc, I'm gonna take three showers. Look, Doc, it was really nice meeting you. Don't worry about me. Uh, take care. I'll call you. All right, bye. You know how your brother is. Yeah, I guess so. Did you see those guys over there? They're gorgeous. Yeah, I noticed them. Can't wait to start dancing again. Yeah, me too. Hi, girls! Sorry I'm late. I was stuck at the lab. So how'd you make out? Well, I brought it to Dr. Jansen. You know the scientists at the lab? He seemed to be really interested. So what did he say? He saw something like it before, but he wasn't sure where. He doesn't know what happened to it either? He has to dissect it or something to find out what caused it. Maybe it has some kind of disease. Maybe it is. Well, in case he needs me, he has my number. Who would need him? <sighs> Did you hear about the fishing accident off the coast today? So what happened? All I know is that four guys went out scuba diving and they never came back. What do you mean, never came back? Maybe they went on a cruise someplace. What do you mean? They didn't. Because the, when the boat was found, no one was aboard. Maybe they drowned. How could they drown? They're all scuba divers. That's strange. Did they find any bodies? Bodies? Somebody from the Coast Guard claimed to have seen some red ooze surrounding the boat. Red ooze? making such a big fuss over that dead fish. Come on, let's go dance.
seen Rick in years. Jeez. Uh, you want to get the phone? Uh, poor baby. Hello, is Bob Wilson there? Yeah, this is he. Who is this? This is Dr. Jansen. Do you know what time it is? You have to take me where you caught that fish. Now? Yes, can you meet me at the marina in an hour? What, are you crazy? The sun will be up in an hour. No time to explain now. Will you meet me? It's important. Yeah. You know, I haven't even had a sleep yet. You know that, doctor? No time to explain now. Will you meet me? It's important. Oh, all right. Jesus. What was that all about? It's the doctor. He wants me to show him the spot where he caught that fish. Here we go with the fish again. When? In an hour. In an hour? And you're gonna go? What, are you crazy? Listen, it's very important. Hey, look, you wanna come with me, sis? Look, you can sleep later on in the day. This won't take long, but you can sleep on the boat. Can I bring my bathing suit? Look, don't bring too much stuff. We don't wanna sink the boat. If you two are crazy, I'm going to bed. You're a half hour late. Dr. Jansen, this is my sister Beverly. Hello, Beverly. Hi, how are you doing? Beverly, this is uh, my assistant, Bill nice Thompson. Nice to meet you. Hi, and Bill. Bobby Wilson. How you doing? Good. How are you? Hi. So, uh, my brother tells me you're not quite sure what happened to this fish. Well, I want to get some more live samples and do some more tests. Brothers to get in the boat. Hey, there, Bobby. You, I don't believe this. I'm thin, I'm not. Just sit down. Have a seat right here in the back. Any more fish like that show up, there could be a problem. What do you mean a problem? It concerns red tides. Red what? Red tides, like Gaunialix or Gymnodidium. Isn't that when the oceans turn red? The water turns red because there are tiny microorganisms with red pigments. When billions of them get together, there's a red hue in the water. <laughs> Come on, we had something like that here in 1976. <clears throat> you know something? That's what killed my fish, I think. That bloom in 76 did a lot of damage. You mean you brought us out here because of that? Red tides happen all the time. That's not the problem. This red tide isn't normal. Normally, there are tiny green plants which are only toxic when ingested by marine life. They could also harm humans when they eat shellfish which have fed on these organisms. This happened in New England in 72. So what about the organism that killed Bobby's fish? Now here's a picture of a normal red tide which occurs at sea. That's weird. Almost about the size of a pinhead, I'd say. Now, take a look at a picture I took from the red tide from Bobby's fish. Wow. So, I know what it 
it looks like, Bobby. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, it looks the same, right? Except it's twice as large, and its shape is not normal. It's larger, big deal. They're only plants anyway. But this species normally isn't found in our temperate climates. Noctiluca, as it's called, has no chlorophyll. Therefore, it ingests living prey, such as diatoms, fish eggs, and other marine life. You mean it eats other tiny plants and then kills the fish with its poisons? Exactly. Do you mean it's like Noctiluca, except it's bigger? The bigger it is, the more damage it can do. Exactly. It appears to be a mutation of some sort, perhaps a completely new life form. You mean I discovered something fantastic? Fantastic, yes, but strange, too. Nobody knows how much damage these things can do if they occur in large numbers. Hey, it looks like I'm going to be famous. That'll be a new one. Well, let's get to work here. Hand me that net. Is that the net? That's it. <laughs> this is it. What a weird-looking net. That's weird, but it works. How does it work? Well, because the organisms are very tiny, you need a net that's fine enough to capture them. Looks like a girl stocking to me. Now, I've used them before, too. Uh, a girl stocking? Yes, and sometimes they've worked even better. Where'd you get the girl stocking from? I have my sources. Oh. Um. Board guys, I hope you don't mind if I go in for a swim. Hey, Doc. Doc, you think it's okay for her to go with swim, you know, swimming? I don't know. We haven't come up with anything yet. All right, go in. Don't um, mind. So look, sis, just be careful and stay close to the boat. I will, Bobby. Yeah, well, well. Oh, sure. He's a real wise guy. Ah, uh -huh. close. Well, good luck. Stay close to the boat. Oh, what just come in the water is great. Uh, not right now. Look, maybe later, but I, I got a present for you. Ah, oh, you brought a wrap. I got a wrap. How nice. Go get it. It's all splashing. Oh, don't worry. Enjoy it. Look over there. Where? I don't know. I think it's the red tide. Look. 
Let me see the binoculars. Sure. Ooh, look, God. You better get your sister out of the water fast. It's headed right for us. Beverly! Beverly, get out of the water! Quick! Get out! I still don't understand what happened out there. Run this by me again. I told you a hundred times there's a huge mass of deadly organisms out there and they're heading this way. We had the red tide here all the time. Now how'd your brother disappear? He didn't disappear. He was killed by those things. I saw it with my own eyes. Well, how come after the Coast Guard combed the whole area, they found no body and no red tide? But this isn't your normal red tide. This is an entirely new mutation. What's the real reason you want to keep people from going swimming in the oceans? We're not making up stories. These creatures killed her brother. And look what it did to her leg. Our doctor said that looks like more like stings from jellyfish, not any red tide. Don't tell me about any kind of jellyfish. I saw those things. They were all over my leg. And if it wasn't for Bobby, I would have taken all of the rest of me. Miss Wilson, I know you're upset, and we're doing everything we can to find your brother. I have some samples I collected earlier. Maybe this will convince you. Take a look at this. Looks like you collected a lot. I took that sample this morning, and it's multiplied rapidly ever since. You mean he's telling me that he's still growing in here? Exactly. A common red tide multiplies at a 300% rate. This organism has reproduced at several times that per hour. Even if that's true, it'll die sooner or later. That's not the point. If it multiplies that rapidly in a sealed flask, just imagine the proportions of a bloom in the ocean. Tell me why the Coast Guard searched the whole area and come up with nothing. I don't know why, but you should at least issue a warning or something until we find out more about these creatures. Creatures? I think a little carried away. I need a lot more evidence before I can issue a health hazard. And until then, the beaches will remain open. Look, you better do something, and you better do it fast. Because what happened out there happened, and I saw it. We are doing something. A marine biologist is coming here from Washington tomorrow to do some tests. I'll tell your story. Some tests? I've done tests. Don't you understand? We have very little time. These organisms are reproducing by the minute. Rich, come on. Listen, I got a beach to maintain. So you stop making trouble. We'll wait until the tests are done tomorrow. Rich, let's go. He doesn't believe us. Thank you.
How's your family taking Bobby's death? Not taking it too well. They uh, they don't understand what happened. They're kind of in shock still. Maybe you should have stayed home. No, um, I had to come. I have to find out what happened to him. I, I can't see that happen to anybody else. Smith? Hi, Beverly. This is Dr. Richardson, the one from Washington I was telling you about. How do you do? I'm so sorry to hear about your brother's drowning. He didn't drown. That's what the Coast Guard report said. If that report was so accurate, what happened to his body? All they found was this hat. <laughs> Haven't you read my test results? Yes, but they seem to conflict with what I received from my staff. We had the area scan this morning and nothing was found. What do you mean they found nothing? Aren't they finishing their tests? Further tests will be conducted tomorrow. But if there was a red tide, I doubt if anything will be found. They usually die in a day or so. What about the samples? Did you see my samples I left? Uh, well, they sort of got misplaced at the office. You misplaced the samples? There goes all that proof. You must think we're crazy, don't you? No, I just don't think there's anything in these waters like red tides. Hey, why don't you go swimming? That would prove it was safe enough, wouldn't it? Well, if I don't have to be back at the office this afternoon, maybe I will. Hey, we'll keep you updated, OK? Bye-bye. This is the area where it happened. What do you think caused it? I don't know. Normal bloom may be formed by the right combination of nutrients, sunlight, temperature, and salinity. What do you mean by nutrients? You know, like fertilizer. Probably derived from sewage dumping. I guess after years of dumping plus chemical and nuclear waste, the species somehow got mutated. Let's not talk about it anymore, OK?
don't know. Let me take a look. She was rushed to the hospital. God, it's back again. What are we gonna do? Maybe I should take a closer look. No, stay back. Don't get any closer. This organism's nothing for you to deal with. Now from New York, WTNP news correspondent, Sue Stein. One week ago, havoc struck in a small seacoast community that threatens the entire oceans on the Earth's surface. Throughout the world, reports of this abnormality of nature continue to come in. Scientists have gathered together to discuss methods of stopping the spread of destruction caused by tiny organisms the size of pinheads. Already beaches throughout the world have been closed. There have been a total of 93 deaths so far. Good evening from WTMP. It's been three short weeks since the beginning of the wave of destruction caused by the abnormal growth of red tide. Already marine life, such as tuna and oysters, are on the verge of extinction. The whale population has all but perished as these huge creatures wash ashore all along the Pacific from Sydney to Bangkok. Fishing industries throughout the world are in shambles. Already riots have started on the Philippine Islands, New Guinea, and Borneo as a result of socioeconomic pressure created by the disaster. We have with us now, live from Washington, D.C., our own Stanley Kozlowski. Stan? Yes, Sue, scientists have been working around the clock here in Washington in an effort to stave off this disaster. I have with me Dr. Jansen from the National Marine Science Institute, who has agreed to give us a few moments of his time. Dr. Jansen, I know you're a busy man, especially in this time of crisis, but could you give our viewers an idea of what's being done to solve this problem? We have the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, and all the oceanographic institutes working together with us on this problem. Well, I'm afraid so far all our efforts have been unsuccessful. Right now we're focusing most of our attention on developing a toxin against the organism. Dr. Jansen, you mentioned an organism. What exactly is this thing that's causing the disaster? Massive death of sea life is being caused by a large bloom of microscopic organisms. This bloom is expanding rapidly as it moves through the sea, absorbing all available oxygen in its wake. Some scientists have been saying these organisms have mutated from another life form. Well, I'd like to show you a tape my staff has prepared. 
Since the dawn of civilization, the oceans have become a dumping ground for wastes generated by men. The accumulation of pesticides, chemical poisons, nuclear wastes, toxic substances, as well as sewage sludge have apparently changed the genetic structure of this microorganism. So do you mean to imply, Dr. Jensen, that we may have brought this disaster on ourselves? This may prove to be true. We may have changed the natural balance by our own insensitive disregard. I'm afraid it will mean the end to life as we know it. You see, Stan, the food chain is the most important biological link of life on this planet. This red tide is destroying everything from the smallest form of marine organism to the largest fish. Our biggest concern at this point is not the larger marine life, but the smallest, particularly the diatoms and plankton. I've brought a little diagram which might help the audience better understand. You see, the plankton and the diatoms together form the largest group of life forms on this planet. They are at the base of the food chain. It is they on which all other creatures eventually feed. Should they die, the entire food chain would eventually collapse. I see. And if the diatoms die, the whole food chain will eventually come to an end. But how does this affect life on land? Diatoms are tiny green plants. They supply 90% of all the oxygen on the Earth. If the diatoms die, the life of every living creature on Earth will be in jeopardy. Without oxygen, man will eventually perish. That is, if there's enough food to last that long. I see. So, Dr. Jensen, how long before we begin to feel the effects of this decreased oxygen? There will probably be an increase in respiratory ailments in major cities in the next few weeks. I would recommend that elderly people and those suffering from asthma, emphysema, and other respiratory ailments remain at home and refrain from strenuous tasks. Thank you, Dr. Jensen. This is Stanley Keslowski reporting to you live from Washington, D.C. supply really going to run out? I'm afraid so, Bev. All the atmospheric measurements appear to confirm this. These organisms have spread as far north as the Arctic Circle, and now they're invading the Antarctic regions. You mean there's nothing we can do to stop it? How long do you really think we have, Rich? A few months? Weeks? Days? Who knows? I can't take this anymore, Rich. I'm not, I'm not uh, really prepared to just sit around and wait like this. First my brother, and now my father. Your father? What happened to your father? He was rushed to the hospital yesterday. Complaining of chest pains. He has asthma. He can hardly breathe now, Rich. I. I, I tried to talk him into moving, but he wouldn't listen. Take it easy, Bev. Try not to lose your senses. It's good to know there's someone like you, Rich. I, I feel like you really care. It's not easy, Rich, knowing that we're going to die. I, 
It's just getting harder and harder every day. In the past few months, there has been a significant decrease in the Earth's oxygen supply. As the oxygen level decreases, the carbon dioxide level increases, causing additional problems involving the world's weather. The buildup of carbon dioxide has caused a dramatic increase of the greenhouse effect. The Earth's temperature rises, changing the hydrological cycle. As a result, massive storms from as far north as Cape Cod to as far south as Florida are occurring continuously, causing millions of dollars of damages. Stay tuned to this station for further details concerning the state of emergency. to talk to you about your father's condition. Uh, I, I know what his condition is. He uh, has asthma. He had it all his life. I'm afraid it's not asthma this time. What are you talking about? Your father is one of the many patients in this hospital who are suffering from respiratory problems caused by the decreasing oxygen level. Is it all right if I go and see him now? Go ahead. Beverly? Beverly? Is that you? I'm right here, Dad. Oh, that's good. Beverly? Was I a good father? I mean, Beverly, <coughs> I, I love you. You're my only daughter. You're the only one left. Yes, Dad. You're the greatest. I love you. That's good. Easy, easy. I'm tired. <laughs> it, it's funny how things go so quickly. Wait. Dad? Huh? Dad? Huh? Dad, take it easy. Dad, I'm going to get the doctor. Dad, I'll be right back.
I'm too late. Where's his daughter? You mean Miss Wilson? Yes. She left about 10 minutes ago. Where'd she go? I don't know. She was kind of shook up. She said something about being with Bobby. Bobby? That's what I said. Oh, no.
Beverly. Beverly. Hello. Come on, wake up. Hello. Beverly. Hello. Hello. Bev, wake up. Wake up, Beverly. three fish. You caught three fish? Yeah, look. Is that all you caught? It was just three, Bobby. Tell me that's all you caught. Just three, all right? Uh-uh. Um. Is that all you caught? Was that it? Just three? Yeah. Uh, except for this one. It looks kind of sick or something. 